imagine an opportunity to come together with the foremost thinkers of our time and explore different possibilities for peace. Euphrates Summit, our world beyond 9-11. This session this morning is uh, Gulten Ilhan, and I have to admit it's the most fun name of all the speakers this morning. Is <laughs> Gulten Ilhan? She is a professor of philosophy at St. Louis Community College in Merrimack, with a master's degree in philosophy from Ohio University. She teaches courses in world religions, introduction to philosophy, and logic at the St. Louis Community College. Before joining the faculty of St. Louis Community College, she taught at St. Louis University. Maryville University, Webster University, and Ohio University. Bulletin is active in interfaith community organizations. Along with participating in interfaith efforts, she strives to promote better understanding of Islam in the St. Louis community. She regularly speaks to community organizations and to area high school and university students about the religion of Islam and what it means to live the life of a Muslim. Bulletin came to the United States from Turkey. She has lived in St. Louis since 1990 and taught at the community college since 1999. Currently, she is still ignoring my friend request on Facebook. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get that straightened out here. So please help me welcome Gulten Ilhan. I'd like to thank Insidia for hosting this event and I'd like to thank the Institute for organizing it and of course thank you all of you for coming and spending almost two days of your time with us here. My presentation is about what it feels to be a Muslim in the United States. I have been living here almost 30 years. I don't divide my life, my life before marriage my life after marriage, or my life before children, or after children, rather my life before 9-11, after 9-11. Uh, I was going to show a couple of clips, but we are having difficulty with the videos. It's not opening, so I'm just going to skip those clips and uh, start from a story from my daughter. I remember about a year after 9-11, she came to me, she was about six years old. She said, Mommy, how come all Muslims are so bad? I'm not worried about her because she is a very intuitive child. When she found out for every dollar man makes, woman makes 70 cents, she said, Mommy, I'm gonna grow up and become a lawyer and fight for the rights of women. So I'm not worried about her. <laughs> but my worry was, if my Muslim child feels that all 1.3 billion Muslims on earth are bad, including herself, then what about my non-Muslim children? Your children, your grandchildren, all the others are being subjected to seeing all the images that we are being bombarded on a daily basis. Then my next question was, where was this coming from? Why does my child feel that all Muslims are bad? What was the source of it? There were a couple of clips that I was going to show, which is not working, but I will summarize it for you. Uh, this is a four-year-old child holding a magazine and the picture on that magazine is, it says, a return of a refugee. And this person has a long beard and has a turban. And this four-year-old child is pointing at the picture and saying, here is a terrorist. We all know 99.9% .9 of the people who wear a turban in the United States are Sikhs. They are not Muslims. 
And then, of course, anybody who has a beard cannot be called a terrorist. I don't know if I can't see the audience. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you have been hearing since morning from Dr. Zogby about us and them, the stereotypes, the creation of those stereotypes. I also created a word called othering. Right now, I don't think you'll find any other group in the United States who are othered as much as the Muslims. And what I'll do is I'll show you a few surveys. Dr. Zabi conducts them. I collect them. And not just his, all of the others, but I stopped. I'm not doing it anymore. So I'm going to share, give you a taste of some surveys. I'm going to share a few because time is limited. And even if I shared hundreds, the results would be identical from September 11, 2011 till now. In 10 years, you wouldn't see a major improvement, actually, maybe even worsen. So I'm going to share some uh, polls, share some so-called journalist view, share some so-called religious leaders, and some pictures, images, give you a taste of what is it that other people are looking at me as. I want to start with a saying of the Prophet Muhammad. Somebody went to him and said, Prophet, inform me about something that will cause me to go to heaven. The Prophet replied, be a doer of good. The man said, oh Prophet, how will I know? that I am a good person, the prophet said, ask your neighbor. If your neighbor says you are good, indeed, you must be good. So what is it that my neighbor thinks of me? My neighbor, not just on my cul-de-sac, not just in St. Louis, not just in Missouri, my neighbor all over the United States, I as the generic Muslim. This was about uh, 1,000 people being surveyed, all different socioeconomic class. About 39% said that the Muslims, including US citizens, to carry a special ID as a means of preventing terrorist attacks in the United States. There were days I felt like I should put Muslim on my forehead and walk all over so that my neighbor, the next person, meets another Muslim and gets into a conversation, but not to be stamped to be discriminated. About one third said that US Muslims were sympathetic to Al Qaeda. I joke about this, but it is really not a joke. I have been subjected to questions such as, have you met Osama bin Laden? I mean, what do you think I am, a criminal? You know, why would I meet him? I was giving a talk at Women's Democratic Forum here in St. Louis. One lady interrupted my presentation in the middle of it and said, honey, you know, we are sorry for you. But what can we do? We are scared of you. You go to your mosques and you do your bombing plan. How do you respond to that? What bothers me most is the third one. 22% said they would not want Muslims as neighbors. I don't have an issue if people don't like me. You may not like the way I look. You may not like the way I talk, etc., etc. I have issues when we have blank hatred towards a group. How do you know I am not that neighbor who's going to save your life? I remember watching Bill O'Reilly. This was right after 9-11. He said, all these Middle Eastern women are so unattractive. Then I thought, how much hatred does he have that he can easily say on the air 
about 750 million women are unattractive. I'm not going to go over all the steps here. This is a Cornell University study, more or less the same. It's not different. This was earlier, <coughs> right after 9-11, maybe about a year or so after, similar. Uh, close to half of the Americans who were surveyed think we should be followed and register where, uh, wherever we are, profile us and all that stuff. Uh, I want to talk about the last part of it, where it says about 22% feel that the government should profile citizens as potential threats based on the fact that they are Muslim or have Middle Eastern heritage. Let's say, for one second, that this will increase our safety and security. Let's say, let us do it. I want to talk about the logistic of it. We don't know exactly how many Muslims live in the United States. Some say 7 million, some say 9, some say 5. Let's take the average. Say we have about 7 million Muslims living in the United States. And we want to profile them. Well, for your information, one third of the Muslims living in the United States are African Americans. We have been discriminating, profiling. Are we going to add Muslimness to that? The other third are from Pakistan, India, brown skinned individuals. But we have millions of people from India who are Christians, who are Hindus, who are Buddhists, who are Sikhs. So are we going to profile every brown-skinned person that we see? Another third of the Muslims living in the United States are from Middle East. There's a problem there too. 60% of the Arabs living in the United States are Christians. They are not Muslims. Then what do you do with me? I'm from Turkey. I don't cover my head. Depending on my haircut, I've been called Chinese, Russian, French. What do you do with me? How are you going to profile me? Profiling doesn't work makes a lot of innocent individuals suffer. I used to be a board member of ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union. I just resigned because I have too much on my plate. So I am for any kind of speech. I believe that people should be able to express themselves. So I'm not here to bash and quarter. I am here to ask you to stand up and speak up. And Coulter can say anything she wants. She is a loud person. But we could also, by speaking up, we'll stop enabling her. She said right after 9-11, we should invade their countries, meaning Muslims, kill their leaders, and convert them to Christianity. Fine, let her say what she wants, but why are we rewarding her? She was invited at Washington University to give a lecture for one hour. They paid her $35,000. I am a full professor. I cannot be fired unless I kill a student or something. I'm secure. <laughs> but, but, if I made a public statement, something like this, this is Michael Savage on the air, saying he is sick and tired of those Muslims. He is saying that there is billion of them. He is saying that we'll kill 100 million of them, so there would be only 900 million left. And he's saying this on the air. This is calling for genocide. If I took that passage, took the Muslims out, put blunts, 
or Catholics or whatever, I would lose my job in a heartbeat. My question is why aren't we bothered by statements like this? Again, let them speak. But just the people in this room picked up the phone, called radio stations. Do you think next time he will be able to say such things? You remember when O.J. Simpson supposedly was writing a book about if he killed his wife, this is how he would have killed her? And there was going to be a movie also. People spoke up and the movie deal disappeared, so did the book deal. So the power is within us, actually. Uh, this is a video clip. Jerry Falwell <coughs> calling my beloved prophet a terrorist on this specific uh, clip. Franklin Graham saying Islam is an evil and wicked religion. Pat Robertson on this clip saying that Muslims are worse than Nazis. Bill O'Reilly comparing my holy book, the Quran, to Hitler's Mein Kampf. President Bush used the term Islamofascism for a while. This is not a joke. Universities called it Islamofascism week. In other words, Islam bashing week. These are posters from George Washington University, and it's not a joke when you see my students think that this is just funny because people are joking. This is the real thing. They hate Muslims, so do we. You would think that in 2011, you would never see signs like that. In the past, it used to be no blacks, no Jews, no Japanese. This is a restaurant in Memphis, and I have many other pictures like that. I live in St. Louis. I live in Chesterfield area, and there's a big mosque on the Weidman Road. It's almost across from the Queenie Road, uh, Queenie Park. I call it the Blessed Street, Street because you have a Catholic church. A few blocks later, you have the mosque. A few blocks later, you have the Hindu temple. Many times, it has been vandalized. You can see swastika and die. I have many, many pictures of many mosques, Islamic centers burned down attack. This is the one in Tennessee, burned down mosque. Another Islamic center, you idol worshippers, go home, 9-11, murderers. Bumper sticker, avenge 9-11, nuke the camel jockeys. My left hand side is a primary school in Florida. F word and swastika in the right hand side phone book phone boot, kill Muslims. Why 9-11? I can't read many of them, just two of them. Just blow the bomb uh, the holder. It says bomb Mecca. And the other, the only good Arab is a dead Arab. Of everything I shared with you. This is the most offensive thing I have ever seen in my entire life. It is Columbus Dispatch newspaper. What you see, that round thing, is a map of Iran. And it is covered with cockroaches. And on the left side, it says, 47 million reasons. Every one of you may dislike Ahmadinejad, the president of Iran. You may call him lunatic. You may call him anything you like. I have no problem with that. My problem is, 
how can we portray every Iranian as a cockroach? <laughs> what do we do with a cockroach? We step on it. We kill it. We don't cry over it when we kill it. It doesn't bother us. This is the ultimate sense of dehumanization and demonizing. Because when we create this, I mean, how can we look at Iranians as cockroaches? They have exact same value, families, life, aspirations, desires as we do. But if we start demonizing them, then we are not going to feel anything. And why aren't we speaking up when we see these things? Why aren't we calling the newspaper and saying, how can you portray my brothers and sisters as cockroaches? Again, hate Ahmadinejad as much as you want. I have no problem. But the people of that country or any other country, Working. This was a billboard in North Carolina, gibberish Arabic, and the message is very clear, Muslim, Arab, Middle Eastern, terrorist. It was the Christian Arabs who fought very hard to bring this down. This was an ad commissioned by Boeing. It's, ad, it's an ad of a helicopter. It reads, it descends from the heavens, ironically, unleashes hell. And what you see is, on the left side, is a mask giving the impression as if it is being bombed. I'm not saying it is, giving the impression. I would bet you every penny I have that Boeing would never, ever commission such an ad if the background was a church or a synagogue or any type of worshipping place. The question is, why is it okay if it is a mosque? Hopefully, I depressed every one of you. Hopefully, that was the goal. I know I didn't talk about anything positive. I know I concentrated on the negative. This doesn't mean nothing, neg nothing positive happened. Lots of positive things happened. I remember my students coming to me right after, saying, Miss Ilhan, sometimes we tend to go crazy. If you feel your life is in danger, come and stay in my house. I know many people went to the mosques, held hands outside and said, you go in, you do your prayer while we wait outside. So I did not share those with you. I shared the negative with you. And the reason is, I believe in the power of human beings. I will never be that person sitting on that comfortable chair with the soda, with the popcorn, and hearing there is a problem somewhere. It only takes one person to make that difference. I will try my best to be the person who will try to make that difference, because all it takes is one person. So I believe in the power of human beings. So I ask you, I beg you, I plead with you. All you have to do is just speak up. Anytime you see any kind of injustice, and it doesn't matter whether it is Muslim or Christian or Jew or homosexual or this or that, all it takes is if every one of us called that radio station, I don't think he would be able to make such statements. So, that's where I end, and I thank you.